There are many hundreds of hilltop radio sites across the UK, and many of them are inconspicuous, but some have an interesting tale to tell. Used for a wide range of services over the years such as home office, military, utilities and lots more, they largely accommodate mobile phone, PMR and commercial radio equipment nowadays, but there are still some interesting oddities to be found at these lonely sites which sit on Britain's hills and moorland. This is Wernoth Low Wireless Station, a site that's featured heavily in lots of my videos, mainly for its aesthetic. It sits on a ridge known as Idle Hill in Wernoth Low Country Park in Hyde, at an altitude of 279 metres. There isn't any clear date of when the site was established, but evidence indicates that the first masts were erected as early as 1947 and as late as 1955. The site has changed dramatically over the years, with most of the original towers and buildings being replaced. The wireless station refers to this set of two home office towers to the east of the golf course, however there's always been a separate site at the car park of the golf course itself. Wernothlow Wireless Station was originally known as Idle Hill by the Home Office when they established a site up there. It was originally a Pi Telecom communal site and housed PMR base stations with landlines to customers' premises, and the golf course was one of two sites that Pi had at Wernothlow. The other was in between the two existing Home Office masts, and this one was a guide pole at the rear of a wooden building inside the compound, but this has long since been removed. The golf club site was for high band customers and the other one was for low band customers such as the AA and what was Manchester Water Board amongst others. Pi kept them apart to avoid interference problems and later when the equipment was co-located in one place there were better antenna setups and filtering to avoid interference. The golf club site was redeveloped in the early 1980s and a new tower was erected which carried the microwave dishes for Mercury Communications who had just established a national network in competition with BT. This microwave network ran down the country and Wernoth Low had a link into Mercury Manchester with another 13 GHz dish on Sunley Tower in Piccadilly Gardens. Wernoth Low was just one hop in the chain. The landlines to the site were private lines provided by the GPO and later BT. Pi used to rent space to customers in communal radio sites or comm sites as they were referred to in the industry. The company had established a large number of these sites over the years and a customer would be encouraged to have their base station in such a place so that their coverage would be better. These were usually commercial companies who needed a large coverage area such as the RAC, the AA, utilities such as gas and water and transport. They'd have a control unit in their office and the private landline allowed them to control the base station on the remote site. In the early days the control unit sent 50 volts on transmit over a pair of wires that simply pulled in the transmit relay at the base station. Along with the DC was the input audio. Then in receive the audio from the base station receive was sent back to the controller. These were referred to as DC lines. Later BT wouldn't provide DC lines as exchange technology changed. They started to use AC lines and base station control was sent via a 2970Hz tone just above the maximum audio frequency. Other functions such as talk through were controlled by FSK signalling. During the 1970s a storm brought down the guide mast at the home office site. There are photos of the damage known to exist but they're not public at this time. The old low band site was eventually removed and the equipment was transferred to the new building at the golf club. Mercury funded Pi's new site in order to get their microwave equipment established there. Pi Telecom later became Philips Telecom in 1986 and then Simoco when Philips sold off the PMR business. The site eventually ended up with NTL, which then became Arkiva, and that is who owns and operates the site today. Police and other emergency services systems have always been active from Wernerthlow, ranging from the old analogue systems on VHF and UHF to the more modern Tetra Airwave. The site currently houses a 25 watt Motorola Airwave system, complete with folded dipole arrays 25 metres up the second home office tower, which provides police, ambulance and fire communications coverage. 
Both sites still support various PMR users on VHF and UHF and a number of point-to-point -point microwave links are still active. There is a movable CCTV camera on the wireless station site. I don't know whether it's here due to the remote location of the site or due to the sensitive nature of some of the equipment housed up here. This brings us nicely to this rather interesting candelabra antenna system which sits on the top of the middle mast. This in simple terms is used to direction find stolen cars and you can find them at hilltop sites around the country as well as on the top of some police force HQs. Ofcom had a remote monitoring direction finding array at Hyde Cricket Club in between the two main sites from the early 2000s which was used for remotely monitoring the radio spectrum. This was removed in early 2019 due to the equipment becoming redundant and ultimately replaced by new technology. So that's the story of Werneth Low Wireless Station, a radio site that's evolved massively in its lifetime due to ever-changing technology and the ever-changing requirements of those it serves. Information and photos of the site are sparse, so it's hard to piece together the history in any great detail. One thing I have noticed is that while the police DF system has recently been replaced with an upgraded model, there seems to be less and less antennas on the length of the masts as the years go by. It isn't home to a large cell site which I've always found strange, so maybe one day it'll cease to exist up here forever.